Hi, this is Amina for another episode of Wise Wednesdays. Today I, we're looking at uh, New Year's resolutions. One of my clients recently commented that she wondered what other people did in their spare time, what their goals were. And so since it's the season of resolutions, I thought it would be a good place to look. And there was a recent survey of, um, in the UK that looked at what people's most common resolutions were. And I've included the full list in the Wise Wednesdays blog, um, but the most common ones tended to be around health, interestingly. So you might recognize a few, uh, trying to lose weight, eating more healthily, doing more exercise, uh, maybe quitting smoking, drinking less, uh, and so on. There were other goals um, around personal life, spending more time with family, for example. Uh, cutting down on social media and time in front of the TV on Facebook. Um, and then there were financial goals, so saving money, um, and then career goals around fulfilling ambitions. And then there were sort of growth goals around learning a new hobby uh, or a new skill. So it's, it's, you'd probably reckon, you'd probably recognize some of them, maybe you've, you're working on one right now or you're thinking of working on one. Um, but the question is, why do people not stick to them? So we know that by the end of January, most people have given up on their ambitions to exercise, gym memberships are unused, and the gym industry makes a lot of money out of, I think, 37 million pounds or something was estimated as the amount of money spent on unused gym memberships. So why do we not stick to those? And there's a nice story um, from Warren Buffet, who's um, the famous billionaire, but also happens to be a very nice down-to-earth person, apparently, I've never met him myself. And um, someone who worked for him um, asked him for some career coaching. And Warren Buffett took him through this three-step process. He said, number one, write down your top 25 career goals. Number two, circle your top five career goals. And then in the third step, he said, he asked the person, he said, what are you going to do with the other 20 that you wrote down? And so um, the other person said, well, they're still kind of a close second, they're still important, so I'm gonna fit them in, squeeze them in between the other goals. And Warren Buffett responded, no, don't do that. That's a sure way to fail. What you need to do is create a new list separate from your top five, and that's going to be your avoid at all costs list. And he was very emphatic about this because there's a temptation to go to that list because you kind of like that those goals are kind of important to you as well. But the problem is that your brain will find a way to use those as a distraction when things get tough with your top five. Um, so here he's kind of illustrating a principle of being focused and being uh, and rationalizing your goals. So a kind of focused minimalism around your goals, not trying to fit too much in. Now you want to uh, do enough, you want your goals to be um, big enough or the total, some total of your goals if you choose more than one, to be um, in big enough for you to feel like you're stretched, but not so big that, that you're crushed um, within a month. And so I want to add three tips to this idea of focused minimalism, uh, which is choosing one to five, I think five, maybe even too much, maybe one to three goals um, that are really important to you and just focusing on those, not anything else. You can relax about everything else, but just choose these three. So an extra three tips to help you. And number one, to make sure the goal that you pick is inspiring, that it's not a responsibility. Yes, we all have responsibilities, but this is something that's going to stretch you. And there needs to be a sense that even as you think of the goal, you feel inspired. Um, again, it can't be so big that um, you just don't know where to, it's just too big. You, you, it's like, I want to go to the moon by next month. That's, probably not going to happen. So that's a too big goal. But it has to feel like a hell yes, yes, I want to do this. It's inspiring just to think about it. And you can do that by connecting to the emotions underneath. So connecting to why it's inspiring in the first place. Because you can feel inspired and not know why. But really digging in and, see, and, and seeing why is it that I'm inspired by it will help you because you will 
articulate um, it rationally, which will help your rational mind stay on board when your amygdala starts to freak out. Um, so an example would be rather than saying, I want to lose weight or I want to eat more healthily, say, I want to nourish and sustain my body so I can be a role model for my children or for the people I care about. And saying that, if that's kind of inspiring to you, is going to be much more helpful uh, to keep your motivation. Number two is to live your goal every day. So a goal isn't something that you achieve in 12 months time in 20, December 2019. Um, a goal is something that you have to live in every moment. Um, so in a sense, a goal is who you become as you're trying to move towards this goal that seems to be in the future. But it's really about, really about the new ways of being, the new habits you're developing, the new attitudes, the new mindset. You're developing each step of the way. So that's every day and pretty much every moment. If, you, if it's a big mission, like I want to be someone with more uh, integrity or more energy, that's going to be something you live all the time every day, not something you realize or happens to you in 12 months time. All right, and then the final tip is to set, your, set up your environment for success. Relying on willpower and alone is not going to work. It's been demonstrated in studies. Um, some people call it front-loading. Um, so you're creating an environment so that your energy can move downhill rather than being a struggle uphill towards a goal against factors in your environment that are stopping you. So you might want to clear your calendar. So when I set goal, a new goal, I remove stuff um, that I put in from a previous goal, uh, obviously. Um, you want to make sure you're surrounded by people who support you, not people who hold you back. Of course, you can't cut everybody out of your, your life immediately necessarily, but you can think about how you spend your time and how much energy you put into your interactions with certain people how much you take on board their opinion. So these are subtle shifts, but they're important in making it easier for you to meet your goals. So spend time with people who encourage you. And spend time in places and environments that also um, somehow reflect or support, resonate with what your goal is. So if you want to lose weight or be, <laughs> be more healthy, don't go and hang out in, um, uh, in a junk food shop all the time, at least. That's a very simple example. So those are three tips. So picking a goal that's inspiring, living it every day, and setting up your environment uh, under this umbrella of picking uh, a smaller number of goals than you would maybe normally. All right, so that's all I wanted to share with you today. I hope it's helpful. I wish you much success and much ease in living your goals and fulfilling your potential. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.